Uh, first up, uh, can I introduce uh, Grace? So uh, Grace lives in Jakarta. She's from BNI Indonesia, uh, graduated from Monash University. Uh, she has a double degree uh, in international trade and hospitality. Uh, she's a founder of a boutique office, um, a team that assists companies and entrepreneurs to set up new businesses professionally. Uh, before I continue, for uh, all of uh, members who want to listen uh, to it in Mandarin, uh, this uh, uh, what I'm reading out ha has a translation function. Uh, so there's a small little globe uh, 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 icon at the bottom of your screen. Uh, click on it and then you can choose Chinese and then you will listen to uh, to this uh, conversation in uh, Chinese. So she's also an author, a guidebook for the professional and family relocation in Indonesia. Um, in the four years that she's been a BNI member, she has actually uh, launched three chapters. Wow, this is like <laughs> only first year um, under okay. orientation. And then after that, uh, our next three years also inspire to people to, 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 to participate in launch chapters. Uh, so she's a launch director consultant. Uh, she has been a membership committee coordinator before and definitely also a Go Club member and an NSP trainer. Her burning desire is to create 5K meaningful and profitable connections. Okay. And a key to success, integrity, consistency, and being persistent. So Grace is, uh, has a very unique uh, way of presenting today. Uh, she will do a presentation and we will wrap up with a Q&A session. So I, I definitely know I'm going to ask her what 5K is going to be. So for all the members, uh, after the session, uh, please do type into the chat box or you or, or we will be asking around the floor if you have you have a question, uh, uh, but uh, one clarification what she presents, uh, please put up your hand and we will call you uh, in and and we have five minutes for for that uh, uh, forum. So without much further ado, can I invite uh, Grace? Grace, the floor is yours. You can share your screen now. Thank you so much, Tong. Let me just share my screen for a bit. Okay, while well, I'm sharing, um, Okay, you have to promise me before I start, everybody gives me a, a welcoming smile because so that will make me less nervous for being here. So hello, Malaysia. Uh, how are you? Apa kabar? Ni hao. It's so nice to see so many familiar friendly faces today. Uh, it might take me just five minutes just to mention your name, but you know who you are and what, you, what friendship we have um, gone through. Uh, I would like to thank Rachel and the team for the invitation. And I'm thankful and deeply humbled for uh, today's invitation. I hope I can share our journey and some of the strategies we're using in relation to retention. Uh, I know that uh, retention strategies for well-established um, chapter will be different than what we have gone through. It's just a baby. It's just a one-year-old chapter. I have 20 minutes and this will include Q&A sessions and at the end. So let's begin. I would like to introduce first uh, of our launch team. Um, retention will not even be a topic if we weren't for the launch team. So let me introduce our Grow Chapters launch team. The four of us, myself, Grace Hakim, and then uh, Satyo Priono as our support director consultant, and Justinus as now as an ambassador to Grow Chapter, as well as Ronald Ong, also currently an ambassador of Grow Chapter and definitely two familiar wonderful faces that uh, are very close to my heart. Daisy and Desmond, and um, I see Desmond in the room, but Daisy, unfortunately, is not in the room. But I'm sending, um, so you know that Malaysia has played an important uh, role in our launch and in our success um, in Jakarta at the moment. Okay. So this is the milestone of what we went through. We started in September 2020 as a core group. Um, and then in four months, we actually launched um, the chapter. And today we have more than 65 members. Um, and other than Grow Chapter, currently we have two other Hall of Fame chapter launched in 2021. And as per today, we have a total of 182 business owners and we continue to grow. So that's a slight overview about Grow Chapter because we are talking about retention. The Grow Chapter has actually passed that one 
year uh, towards the renewal rate of our members. Okay, and we have also uh, successfully and pleased to achieve um, retention rate of 85% as per 26th of January 2022. Okay, right, so that's a slight overview about BNI grow. Um, it's always uh, challenging to really work on a chapter. So our goals was to increase first to increase chapter size and second of all is the profitability of the members. So more members, more business. Therefore, increase, increasing in chapter size, we're also increasing the opportunities of businesses, which results in their profitability. So moving on to very short about retention strategies. I'm not really gonna go into all the tools that BNI has provided. I think it's all given. But um, what we have experienced ourselves are these three um, items that is really, really important. The first is begins with the ends in mind. Set, uh, number two is setting the mindset. And number three is setting the expectations. Unlike BNI existent in Malaysia, BNI's existent in Indonesia has just recently been known just a little bit. If I heard that even during your INW, there's still a lot of people not know about BNI Malaysia, then even more so less in, uh, in Indonesia. Uh, so that is also part of a challenge, but I think we have overcome that uh, throughout the three chapters that we have launched. So what did we mean by begins the ends in mind? Um, so begin the, with the end in mind means to think about how would you like something to turn out before you get started? And profitability of the members was our end in mind. And retention will naturally happen when members find BNI help them in their business, resulting in profitability. And through my experience as a member in my previous chapter, I learned that members quality can actually make or break a chapter. And so our retention plan began even when we started the core group. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't mind, I'll just stop sharing so I can, uh, there's no more slides. So these are just the three points that I would like to uh, share with you. Yeah. I think it's better to, to see everyone's faces and, and I'll just share. Okay. Right. So therefore, one of the success factor uh, was determined by the filtering the members through the coffee sessions. Right. So several must have criteria for members are in our chapters. They must be business owners. They must be decision makers and they must be in business in operation for a minimum of at least three years. And we don't accept any startup companies um, and the business must have a legal entity. And also the candidate must believe in the philosophy of givers gain. I can spot a hunter miles away. So when I did my coffee sessions, uh, if let's say they are hunters, uh, the coffee session usually ends in five minutes um, because I think we have completely different value and that is one of the value that we really need because you won't last. Nobody can last in BNI without that givers gain value coming from themselves. And next, the candidate need to practice at least another of the two core values of BNI. One is lifelong learning. The other one is building relationship. It doesn't matter if they don't know how to build relationship, but they need to love, to like, to build relationship. And they need to be a lifelong learner because you know how miserable that is. If you don't like learning and you're in BNI, you can hardly survive too. So uh, in order to make our leadership team less work, then we, are, we were hunting on those sort of uh, candidates uh, to be part of our referral partners. And because values actually takes time. So we have no time to teach that values in BNI. We can actually strengthen their values already, but we cannot find somebody who has no value and, oh, let's come into BNI and we'll teach you how to do it. Uh, that's not the way. So that's the way we screen our members or the candidates to be our members. So if you're asking me how, what's the conversion rate? I can tell you that my conversion rate, I'm, I did uh, unlimited number of coffee sessions, which I learned from Daisy. 
So she is my super cool mentor for um, coffee session. If I did 10, she said, not enough. If I did 20, she said, not enough. Okay. So <laughs> anyway, so she's uh, my great mentor. But what, what happened is that the more you, you know, I did them, the more I, I get to see. And my conversion rate started from 30% to 50%. Why? Because at first, even the sponsors or the drivers were not aware of what sort of criteria they were looking for. So they just sent a lot of people to coffee sessions and then they didn't meet any of the values. Okay, so a lot of hunters, a lot of uh, businesses that was just uh, starting, they changed uh, pivoting in businesses. So, and then we refined the search. We, I told the, uh, sp- the sponsor saying that, look, these are the candidates that we're looking for. It wasn't more on the, on the business, but it was more on the character. It was more on, uh, on them because I keep uh, uh, the book of Dr. Ivan Meissner about who's in your room that actually resonates with me. Uh, although my role as a launch director is just to go to launch, but bear in mind that myself, I'm a launch director with support director. We have the same vision. So it's a really, really long term. We're not talking about how many to launch, but what happened after we launch. That's the most important bit because the journey actually starts from there. Um, so again, I have turned down a lot of them who like to join BNI, and this is really, really important. They like to join BNI because they want to find network, but they don't have network. Let me share with you there are a lot of businesses in Indonesia. They come from a very big businesses but they don't have network because they were settled already. You know, they came back from overseas and they took over the factories. They took over the uh, businesses, but they've never thought they needed network. So now, because the business was slow, now they start to go out, you know, 30 something, uh, even, you know, late twenties, they said, okay, now I need network. Now I want to learn. So when I actually um, did the coffee session, I said, do you have network? Um, who do you hang out with? Do you have organizations? And they said, no. I said, well, you have to bring a visitor every month. You have to bring referral. Will that be a challenge? So they said, yes, it will be a challenge. So if that's the case, if you're not bringing network to our chapters, that means you'll be taking our network. And BNI is not about taking, but BNI is all about sharing. So if you don't have anything to share, then uh, this might not be the right platform for you today. So what I did is I would recommend other organizations for them to uh, be leadership in or uh, for them to grow uh, and then but keep them in contact. Just because they can't be a member doesn't mean that we cannot uh, keep them in contact when it comes to relationship and business. So they know that we are givers game. I said, it doesn't matter if you can't be a member, but our members are happy to help you if you need any uh, advice or any business consultation that you see from our, our chapters. So my friend, uh, good members with good network are more likely to add value to the chapters. So I have been very, very firm on that. And I'm glad that the whole launch team agreed uh, to this and would always say yes to good members. Um, And it's okay to say no to other members that were not qualified to to enter. Uh, So in addition, quality members with strong character will also be the right candidates for the role in the leadership team. Leadership team, it's it's a role that is so extensive. It's like companies. So you really need them to be very qualified. So if you have a pool of members who is just anyone and they are not leaders, then it's very difficult for us to sort them out to become the leadership team. So what happened is because we had a really good quality members, we today in Grow chapter, we have a very, very good leadership team. And the, and they need to buy in BNI. They cannot be just, I'm trying, you know, that sort of thing. And especially our MC team, membership committee. You know how we did a seven month review? So before I did, we did seven month review because I happened to be the, uh, eventually the MC coordinator as well. So I was just asking them, I said, are you going to renew before you even asking other members? If you are still 50-50 or 80-20 of renewing, then please do not, you cannot do the seven months renew definitely. So they all have to buy in and believe in BNI before they carry on their job. And we are very, uh, not only lucky, but we are very blessed that we have great president, we have great top three, 
um, now that we're having the next term, but all of them are selected ones. And how we selected our coordinators or the top three most important of all is that we even use the Clifton Strength Assessment uh, to, to really look at them and see where their strengths are because not everybody can hold the leadership role uh, in specific department. So that's how we do so. If any one of you here are from Gallup or from Clifton Strength, bear in mind that um, we use that. And one of our ambassadors, Ronald Ong, is the Gallup coach uh, in, in our chapter as well. Okay, so that's, that's one uh, about setting uh, the ends in mind. The end is always retention. Retention means prof profitability because people will, we cannot retain anyone if they don't have any more business because simply BNI is not a social networking. BNI is a business networking and they need to get business out of it and use the tool. So number two, this is a, after we launch, this is a really crucial. So I'm actually just taking you into uh, the phases of what we're doing at the moment since we're like baby chapter uh, over one year. So what we did throughout the last year. Uh, secondly, after we launched the chapter, uh, everybody was so euphoric, you know, you have new chapter launch. So what's next? Um, setting the mindset was really, really important, right? The first few months were so crucial and challenging for the new members. But believe it or not, uh, in, in, our, in my experience, the first three months were the one they were asking a lot, whether they talk to themselves or they talk to others. And they're challenging, does BNI really works for me? You know, is this really true? So that's what happened. So within that three months, we really need to set their mindset. This is also the time we, uh, we continuously give them a bite-sized uh, training. So we tell them or we inspire them saying that, look, you are responsible for your business in BNI, not the leadership team, not the DC, not anyone else, but it's yourself, right? And you have to use BNI as one of the marketing tools to grow your business. So what happened is there are a lot of people, maybe some of us, or maybe I was, I went before I became a DC and buy into this whole thing of BNI. Um, some of them actually take BNI as part of just a community, but they didn't take BNI as part of their marketing strategies. So now, uh, even since coffee session, I usually tell them uh, or interview now that uh, the whole leadership team is doing, I said, BNI need to be part of your business plan. It needs to be part of your marketing strategy. So you will have uh, online marketing strategies. You might have your in-house sales marketing strategies. You might have your social media marketing strategies, so on and so forth. But BNI needs to be part of your relationship-based marketing strategies and which by, by survey, relationship-based marketing and referral-based marketing has the highest uh, conversion rate. So they need to put that effort. So as soon as they put that into their pipeline or into their part of their business plan, then it resonates more to them and they are willing to put more effort in whatever it is that they want to achieve for their business, okay? And uh, the last one that we usually also inspires them to, uh, to understand is that BNI is a relationship-based platform. It's, it is not an e-commerce. Uh, if you know Indonesia, we're really big with Tokopedia, right? So I keep saying this is not Tokopedia, this is a BNI platform. Nothing is instant about it, uh, but the tools are ready to be used. So work and commitment uh, are needed to make it work. Uh, so all our members need to complete our MSP. This is the how-to. The, they need to complete their MSP in 14 days. I know in Passport to Success, we have uh, about 30 days, but our members finish it. They need to finish it in 14 days. I think some other chapters uh, maybe do it even faster, but 14 days for us is good enough so that they can really immerse into the BNI culture and do what they need to do and understand it. And they need also to understand that each member, all of them have different referral curve. So one may be passing through a year with not a too many referrals. So they need to fine tune their one-to-one. -one. They need to fine tune their 30 second presentation. Um, so we bring that to understanding when it's one-to-one. -one. And the first year is a learning year where relationship just started and it will take time. Okay, but what I will usually share with them is BNI understand about the law of relationship. 
They understand the behavior of a normal relationship, any relationship, whether it's business or personal, when you leave it without any commitment, when you just leave it as the way it is, you don't have to meet every week, you don't have to meet every month, then it may take you probably 10 years to build that trust, correct? This is this probably happened in our relationship as well. But what BNI does is BNI actually had that theory saying that, look, you have to meet every week so that probably uh, supposedly you got to know each other or build that trust in 10 years, you can do so in two years. And if you meet more and if you give more and you contribute more, it's probably make you even shorter. Maybe in one year, you get to trust each other even more and share some businesses. And this is also the time where uh, we ask them to set individual goals. This is the time for them to say, what do you want from BNI? How many percent of your business you want to drive it from BNI and how, what sort of referral you need? So, and they need to know and understand the practice of power of one. Uh, this may seem very um, simple, but for our members who are new to BNI, they really need a helping hand from one stage to another because otherwise there are so much noise at times uh, and it takes a while for them to actually sink in and buy into BNI. So how do we reinforce all that? We do bite-sized training. Um, as you know, in Indonesia, not everyone uh, is well conversed in English, but even so, even if some of them do, it's also quite a challenge when you have to take the curriculum in English and understand it and how to apply it. So what happened, our support director consultant, uh, he's a PR, he's also a lecturer. So we are very uh, fortunate that he actually take out, you know, all these from business builder from the MSP and really reframe that into it so it's easier to understand and in relation to their business respectively. So that's one of the things that we have been really, really busy doing, but that is something uh, that we are doing at the moment and it's working pretty well because then people have feedback and you know it challenges them to think business way. We are not talking about only relationship, but we teach them how to strategically think about their business in relation using BNI. Okay. And also during this time, engagement plays an important role. Um, as you and I probably know, Malaysian and Indonesian are pretty much the same. We are very warm. We are very buddy-buddy, uh, you know, like bonding type. I mean, I, we can just ask for somebody to come in as a member and they will do it for the sake of tidak enak hati. I like, uh, enak, so I'm just going to go in. But that doesn't work uh, with, with our interview. But that's how it is, right? So the, the, the moment they bonded, it's like, okay, you know, it's, it's everything. So engagement is very important, not engagement only with uh, members, but from leadership team to really go down and be engaged with our uh, members and as well as DCs are also, we're really engaging also with our members because uh, they've, they've seen us uh, or the launching director as the, the first gate. This is why I, I, I got into BNI, you know, so be responsible about it. So I, I have to keep, uh, uh, be really engaged about it. So, um, Authentic engagement always begins with listening. Uh, we are communicating to a collective, unique individuals. Um, every person will have their own way of communicating and each person will have an individual way in which they want to be communicated to. So each one of us are very unique. And so keep in mind that most effective communication will be on one-to-one -one where discussions are usually open. And this may sometimes getting off track and talking about non-critical business, but that's okay. That's how sometimes that's how they want it. And that's how we listen. So it's during that, that moment that relationship, our relationships are built. So we get to understand um, the way they think on how to use BNI and what were their challenges, because every one of them, believe me, they have different challenges, can be 101 and we have to really listen. So moving on, that was the, about the mindset. And the thirdly, final one, are setting of expectations. So once they were all equipped, they know on how to use BNI equipment and they immerse more or less in the BNI culture. Uh, the next step for us is to set their expectation about local business, global network. Being in a meeting, um, we have a full uh, online meeting. So we don't do hybrid, just... So to avoid excuses about traffic jam, which is very, very 
cliche, right? So we don't do that. So I said, no, full online. So no excuse. You can be there in five minutes uh, on online. So this is what happened. But they do meet offline, but those are not in our absences or attendance. Um, so we keep saying that, look, Vienna is different because it's open business and global network and want to keep saying that. So which we have mentioned in the early days how BNI uh, is so important if you would like to go global. And that was one of our, that was our vision to bring local entrepreneurs to compete globally, uh, to explore the global market uh, using BNI. So in practice, we have scheduled some business matching with other countries and introducing our members to other BNI members globally. The one coming up would be Sri Lanka versus uh, Sri Lanka and India on, in April. And I have also introduced the INW, Malaysia INW, Philippines for them to actually participate, which we, they were very, very excited. And, um, and they, they felt that, look, this is really, really global network. So in conclusion, uh, my friend, the selection of members at the beginning phase of retention. I don't see any other thing that are more important than that. And while the rest are followed through from the selection of the members. So while BNI system and structures have been around for 37 years, I believe we are made from different personalities who are dynamic. We come from different background, um, different education and each one of our members have their own expertise and they're all successful business owners. So therefore we should be leaders who inspire them and who share with them how BNI can be used as the vehicle, not to help their business, but how to expand their business. So give them a little bit more um, vision of what BNI can do for them. So that actually stretches a, a longer way for retention because I know most of them, uh, when they think short term, it's going to be a challenge because it's really like, okay, what do I get? What do I get? And But what I usually tell them is like, when you expand your business through BNI, you have to start thinking, even start thinking today, what can you give and what can you contribute? And when you start thinking that way, the chances and the door of opportunities are actually open for collaborations and for co-creation. So this is something that... Uh, I really deeply say that to all the leaders or all the business owners in our chapters, um, giving them hope, saying that through BNI, not only my business will flourish, but I can also contribute to more people other than my company and myself. So that's about it. That's a bit of my sharing. Thank you very much for your attention and thank you very much for the time. It has been an honor um, and thank you for having me here today. If there's any question, I'm happy to answer as best as I can. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Grace. Thank you uh, for the sharing. Uh, do we have uh, we have time for one question? Anyone want to ask a question? I've got can, one here. Can, yeah, go ahead. Hi, Samuel. Samuel. Hi, Grace. Okay, I noticed the timeline. Uh, most of the chapters were basically formed during the pandemic lockdown. So the CS, I can imagine, must be online, Zoom. Mm -hmm. Or was there also a face-to-face -face follow up? Just no. to make sure that it is good. No, everything was done online, Amil, oh. and yeah, and there was everything online, and we didn't have any slide. So it was mostly uh, our coffee session is really one to one, and really taking the 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 time to really explain. So it's not them. a group CS, but a one to one CS. One to one, yeah. Okay, great. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, thank you. 